Welcome back to yet another YouTube video. It is your girl Lin Wei, and there's absolutely no way without going through the way, and we believe that Jesus Christ is the way. <laughs> put on my badge so that you know that you understand that these green scrubs are not for nothing <coughs> these green scrubs are not for nothing <coughs> and i saw this very cute post and in this post it was just like be the ot that god wants you to be it was just so amazing just the highlight of my day but i wanted to shoot this specific video in my scraps because i thought it was appropriate because nowadays due to clinical reasoning i ask myself the appropriateness of things yeah anyway yo my first block experience in third year let's discuss this so this video is going to be unfiltered truthful no edits I'm, I'm probably just going to add subscribe and whatnot but i'm not going to edit this because i'm also very lazy and tired not lazy i am tired because i'm busy so at UWC, I'm just going to take you guys through how the UWC teaching process for occupational therapy, health sciences, community and health sciences work, right? So in the Faculty of Community and Health Sciences under the Occupational Therapy Department at UWC, we get placed in third year. You're supposed to do five blocks. Um, yes, it's five. No. Is it? Yes, it's five blocks. So you do five clinical blocks. So a block is called a clinical placement. So it's a clinical placement. You either placed in a hospital, in a special needs school, in um, a school in general, or placed in a clinic, or placed in a residential um, home area like disability um, care. Uh, what other place do they place this? Community, right? So those are the ones I'm currently aware of. And the placement is done randomly. Well. We don't know how the, the placement procedure goes, but all we know is that we get placement <laughs> after like the term just ended. And the way the UWC um, process works is that they have three processes of like teaching um, or guidelines or ways to experience your learning, right? So to facilitate your clinical learning. So these processes include the UWC individual process which is individual clients. In third year, you only do one client. Well, you get two clients. One is your mid-block and one is your final block. I'll explain that later. And then you get um, your second one, which is a group process model, which is slightly more difficult than um, individual, um, individual... Well, they're basically the same, but it's more work because now you have to write up on three clients underneath your group, which can contain about maximum 15, 20 people. But my group, and I will explain also, let me not explain that. And then the last one is the community process, which we only do in fourth year. So these other two are available um, in third year. So in third year, those are the two specific blocks that you are most likely going to get. So there's group process and individual process. So for my first field work placement, my first ever, you understand me? The Lord was like, it's a good idea. We're going to place her in Lentechir Psychiatric Hospital. Get this, I just lost my grandmother. I lost my grandmother three days before my first block. So on Thursday, the day I found out that my grandmother passed away, that morning I had received information about where I'm placed, um, who's going to be my supervisor, what, am I gonna, what is expected of me in the placement. And we did fieldwork orientation, we did all of this stuff happened prior to the receiving of your placement. And this placement happens every single time. Like so after you are done with your exams, you get your placement as as quick as they can get it to you, you know? So yeah. It was a lot. Like overall my experience of it like in retrospect, the learning was facilitated. I did learn so much, but mentally I did struggle and I did experience so much and I think it's a an appropriate time. I'm shooting this like in mental health week. So it's an appropriate time for me to discuss this now. Um and then so my mental health obviously was taking a downward spiral because I'm a perfectionist. Well used to be a perfectionist. I am a child of God, I prefer excellence. The enemy is just trying to attack me with perfectionism. And I refuse. I 
deny to believe that I am a perfectionist. Um, I'm not a perfectionist. I am a child of God. I believe in the spirit of excellence and first class and just doing my best as I am doing it for the glory of the Lord. So in the first like three weeks of the vlog, I was ignoring my emotions, not dealing with them, not speaking to my clinician, not speaking to my supervisor, especially my supervisor. So we get like a supervisor, which is a university person that's supposed to supervise you. Then you get a clinician, which is a university, no, not the university, which is the placement person that's supposed to supervise and facilitate your learning on a day-to-day -day basis. Your university supervisor marks your staff. So I feel like this video is becoming an information session about field work. But anyway, the whole important thing to like note is that there's various things, right? So before I get into my actual experience, there is in each week of your field work placement, outside of your first and last week, um, you are ex they, there's expected submission of uh, session plans. So in the previous block I was in, I had to submit two session plans a week. Uh, and those session plans are very lengthy. It's you explaining what activity you're doing, what is session aim, what is your objective for the individual people in the group, providing a sociogram if applicable, explaining your principles, your treatment, your handling, and just precautions. So basically the whole plan, this is what I plan my session to be. And that's for group process. For individual process, it's also a similar procedure, but it's obviously less less texting because you have to be specific to one person in groups you have to be specific to the general agreement of the group um, I won't discuss that because I don't think it's important and then in the middle of the placement so from like the first week week one so we have seven weeks in this placement uh, Monday to Thursday depending on your placement you get a set amount of time so my first field work placement was eight hours so I went in at eight and I clocked out at four and then um, that was just the field work experience itself and then on the first week of field work placement we had our personal learning ob objectives that were due we had um, a journal that is due so it's a reflective journal in this reflective journal you use crop cycle to explain your concrete experience your reflective observations and your abstract conceptualization which involves researching reading articles i like that part and then the last one is ex your active experimentation so what have you learned from what you just like experienced it's a very interesting like experimental way of reflecting but it's nice i like it um but it's a lot <laughs> when you have to do it every week um so we have to do that every week and then you have to submit sections of your case study so your case study is basically the uwc process so whichever one you're doing whether it's community whether it's um individual or group there is a guideline of what is expected what is required what 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 needs to be in there then you get a mid-block examination which is like your mid-year exam but it's mid-block so it means it happens in week four because that's like the middle of your block and in this mid-block you have to uh, present your clients so whether you had a group an individual or community you have to present your clients as far as i'm concerned and then you present your clients in front of your supervisor and your clinician and they give you a mid-block big form to like tell you about your professionalism your learning and how far you are are you doing okay are you not okay and at mid-block they can chase you out of the block if they don't think you are compliant or you are just not doing the work you're not ready for this you can take a break if you want to that's how hectic it gets but anyway right and then that is that is just that and then the other aspect of it is like after mid block you get this big big form like it's called the big block form and it's a very long form that like is like they mark you it's like a rubric like it's very <laughs> personal i personally like the feedback from my mid block was very personal but it was specific to me as a therapist i think that's what i like about the uwc process of teaching because it's really specific to the therapist that you're becoming and when i was going through my reflective journals a lot of them obviously have dealt with my emotions and how i was feeling and like my experience of stuff especially from the lens of somebody that's going through grief but still having to perform accordingly i learned a lot of life lessons through like just being in that block like how the world continues like life moves on even when your life seems like it's on a standstill and i remember like 
just being in the presence of the Lord and just being with God used to cheer me up. Like, I would get so excited for the weekends. I would do all my work on a Friday like or on a Thursday to make sure that I get to experience my weekends with the Lord and spend time with Him because in that moment, I was numb. And I had to learn how to be a therapist. And it was very painful to to go through the process because... I was numb for most of it. Like, I was numb, I was unresponsive. There were sessions where I would be with the clients but not be with the clients. And my clinician would tell me that you're not being with the clients. Here you were very, like, because in a group in a psychiatric hospital where people have active, like, it was an acute setting, so people have active psychosis. They are experiencing hallucinations, delusion, they're looking at you, they are, they're just, in their head and there's a lot of prompting that you need to do you need to speak to the people you you need to be enthusiastic as a therapist you need to be like yay guys we're gonna do this activity we're gonna do it all well and so they you know um as you can see i learned a lot of skills because i'm able to just transcend to that and still come back to my emotions because that's the whole point of the process i think the point of the process is to educate you on how to become and how to be a professional self and still have your identity so in that process i was very numb throughout and like it was a very mentally exhausting <laughs> process and when it came to an end it felt unreal and it took me a very long time to recover because right after that when when your block ends you have to submit your final like in our case study, now you must incorporate all the feedback. So the whole point is that throughout you must be receiving feedback, receiving feedback, receiving feedback. And that feedback that you're receiving, you must apply it to the next week. So in the previous week, you apply the feedback that you got in the previous week, in the previous, you know, just that feedback process that goes on and on. I think it was very beneficial that for me specifically, because I have been receiving feedback since I was in grade nine. Like when I say feedback, I mean like, negative criticism from adjudicators people telling me that your speech is a horrible you just spent seven minutes an hour long preparing nonsense and just like that for me was a great way for me to learn how to like receive feedback but then because i'm a debater by nature quite often i'm very defensive when i receive feedback i will take it but i'm still going to defend what i did so that's what I've been like trying to unlearn as time progressed and being more assertive about certain stuff in this specific block where I'm just like, I don't speak Afrikaans. You guys are not about to speak Afrikaans right in front of me. That's disrespectful. I don't think it's professional. If English is a medium of communication, let's stick to English because that's what I understand, right? But at the same time, I have to learn Afrikaans, so sometimes I just let them go <coughs> for other reasons. Um, and then what else happened so that was just yeah my first field book experience i would really say that it was a good one my clinician was amazing she was passionate about teaching and educating and she yeah she really gave specific um and like careful attention to you as a student and also you as a therapist because if she was too much of me as a student i wouldn't have done anything in the block because I would have just been like, well, I know my, my clinician is going to understand. I'm just going to, you know, just stay here today. I'm not going to go to block, you know, I'm not going to do this. My supervisor was quite strict. Uh, she was strict. And at the same time, I, I regretted not communicating with her sooner that, well, certain things that you say and do don't really sit well with me. And I really, I wish I could have done that because I really, like I limited my learning from her because she is in private practice. She had like been practicing like as a, an OT for like 12 plus years and she's still practicing. But the fact that she worked in the placement that I was in, she knew the place, she knew what to do. And her, her feedback was always in relation to think about this, think about that, think about what not, like to facilitate learning. I think sometimes we think our supervisors and our clinicians need to spoon feed us things, but they're not there to spoon feed things. They're there to ignite knowledge. It's supposed to be like, oh, I actually didn't think of it like that. 
so that's the purpose of a clinician in my sight and in my understanding that you're supposed to guide the learning process and not necessarily give me information like you're supposed to give me information because I don't know anything so that was like yeah that's just in general everything um went through a lot sometimes had fights with my block partner I learned how to work with people learned how to work in a team guys and I was in ward rounds hmm, your girl was in ward rounds with like medical doctors your nursing staff I was just there like yes queen team allied health right here standing live and in person in a hospital the truth is i love a hospital a hospital is fun they are fast paced they are just let's do this quick let's get it done ah, love the thrill that's where that's where that's where i am i really at this point because the current placement i'm in is a residential um uh protective employment for people living with intellectual disability and yeah it took me a while to adapt because everybody there is so chill like they are so chill, there's no rush, there is there is a rush but it's not rush, you know. Like the rush, the hospital rush is different from the rush of the world. But yeah, that was fun. It's just, it's, it's been fun. Um I think when you go into block and your clinic your clinicals, it's passion really drives you. If you're really passionate about something, you really wanna put your whole effort, your life, your mind, your might you would get to that point where you like whatever it costs i remember submitting my final block i, I didn't sleep for the night of my final block like i spent the previous night typing all the way through to the next night because i wanted my 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 case presentation and well not my case presentation i mean like my final block submission to be you know amazing because i have all this feedback i know what to do now the first three weeks of all your OT clinical blocks, you're not going to know what you are doing, but do something. Don't now be like, I don't know, and do nothing. Do something. This is advice from big sister OT to younger sisters in OT, right? Just do something. Focus, do the work, and it's not even about like focusing. Like My clinicians in my current block placement are also the UWC alumni OT students. The, the, they just keep echoing the same thing. It's just four years. Suck it up. It's really just going to be four years. But I would advise you get emotional buses. You get um, mental health support. Um, get a support system if you don't have one already. Make sure you have a study group. Make sure you have people that motivate you. People that will stand with you in prayer. And not just go to the battlefield like by yourself. You're going to get wounded badly. So yeah, that's just my first field experience. It's been great. I have been enjoying it, and I think because I like mental health and I like running groups, I enjoyed it very much. It was challenging to like, you know, it wasn't really because like I do a lot of small groups anyway. But the challenging one is the kind of block placement I'm in now, where it's individual, and because I didn't do individual, so. With individuals, it's way more specific. With groups, I, will, I could get away with just being superficial sometimes, but not all the time. Like, I, I could get away with just stating four or five people in the group and saying, oh, this is a conclusion. But now, with individual, like, I have to do a person, like, individually. I must go through that domain individually. I saw them bad things. They require independence. Well, they are independent but require assistance. However, they refuse to be assisted. What does that mean? They participate in the activity with poor quality or average quality. It's been fun learning new terms. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making it and I hope that it is helpful to people that are looking into studying occupational therapy at UWC, I would recommend it. I do think that we become more resilient in this degree as you go along with it, especially the way UWC does it. It's torture, but it's worth it. Um, <laughs> pain, guys, pain, pain, pain. Pain is equal gain, I think, in studying. Um, but <laughs> the important thing as well is remember that the Lord is with you and God will always place you where you need to be placed. So yeah. I will see you guys in my next video. A video. A video.